Welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about adding a receiver to your system. So in my setup, I have a Vizio TV and then I also have an Onkyo receiver. The receiver in my case controls the surround sound volume as well as the input switching. Uh, you know, whether I've got it hooked up to a gaming console or the QNAP NAS or something like that. Uh, so we don't use the TV volume at all. It's down at zero all the time. Uh, the only sound comes from our receiver. Uh, so one of the major benefits of using home remote is that you can get rid of your TV remote, your receiver remote, your, your QNAP or Kodi remote. Um, all these other remotes can be combined in one and that's really a huge benefit. Um, so right now we have to use the TV remote for almost everything except volume control and muting where we have to have the receiver remote or actually get off the couch to modify it, which is of course out of the question. So we're going to add the Onkyo remote to our system. I'm actually going to do it two different ways because this Onkyo, uh, it's Ethernet controlled, uh, but it only has certain commands that can be sent via Ethernet. And then it has some IR commands that are different and the two are not necessarily overlapping. So I have this Onkyo hooked up two ways. It's both wired into the network on a static IP address, and then it also is hooked up to the global cache. Uh, if you remember my previous video about adding a IR device, this one is located on module one, port two. Uh, whereas if you remember the TV is on module one, port three. So to add the Onkyo, we're actually gonna start with the most difficult one, which is uh, the ethernet version of the device. So to start, we're gonna come over to the devices and go to add a new, scroll down, and Onkyo is listed here as an option, but the integration is a little tricky. So in order to do it, uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it the okay to search for devices. Now, make sure that whatever your computer your designer is on is also on the same local network that your receiver is on. In my case, the Wi-Fi that this laptop is hooked up to is uh, connected via a switch to the hardwire network that the receiver is onto and the two can communicate. Uh, if you had your laptop hooked up to like a guest network or something like that that was VLAN separated, it's not gonna work. Uh, what the home designer is gonna do is probably a quick UDP port scan on the port that the Onkyo communicates on and locate it real quick. Click OK here and it will do its work in just a couple of seconds. Once it finds the device, it's gonna ask if we wanna add it to our project we're going to choose yes. Now, this next drop box or this next command is uh, super important. It's asking us if we want to automatically generate pages and variables for the new device. And unfortunately, we can't click yes on this because if we do, it's going to take over our entire project, deleting all the work we've done on the visual side up until this point and replace it with some pre-made code that the developer has put in there to help you out. This would have been a great tool at the beginning of our project had we started with the receiver very first thing before we did any UI elements. Unfortunately, because we went a bit of a different direction, we are not gonna be able to use this functionality or it will delete everything in our project. So we're gonna choose no here. Now you can see it went ahead and added the device, but no variables. Uh, you can see here the 10.0.0.26, that's the IP address my receiver is on. Uh, the port, and I believe this is the MAC address it's using for the identifier to authenticate those commands. So in order to get the variables that we need, we're actually gonna do a bit of a trick. I'm gonna save where we are on this project. So at this point, what we wanna do is actually create a new project so that we don't do any damage to our existing project. We're just gonna create a blank project. I don't really care about the settings in it. Um, it's just gonna give us some warnings that it's gonna go ahead and create a new one. Here we go. So we're going to go through the same steps real quick, adding that same Onkyo that we just did to our actual project. Let it do the same scan, add the device, and then when we get to the same pop-up that asks if we want to go ahead and auto-generate everything, let's click yes, and uh, it will go ahead and take over. You'll see here in the views, it has created some speaker, speaker controls here out in the pages. We're not going to make use of those. What we are going to make use of, however, is under the sources under this TXNR636, it went ahead and created some variables for us. And these are the important ones. This is what we want to take and transfer back over to our real project. So the main one that I'm interested in here is uh, main volume. Now my receiver has a second zone 
that it can control like for a, a second room or a second set of speakers. I don't use that functionality and you can see there's a lot of references to zone two down here. Uh, everything I wanna do is in main volume zone. Uh, so the command that it's actually sending is main underscore volume and that's kind of the key, that's the piece of information that we didn't have before. So I'm just gonna make a copy of that uh, to take over to our real project so we can recreate this same variable. You can see it's also created some virtual device variables. Uh, we're gonna get into that much later. Uh, we don't need those to do what we're trying to do right now. So we're gonna exit without saving. Okay, now we're ready to get back into our real project and our device is still gonna be there just with no variables as we had created it. All the connection info is still here. We're gonna create that variable uh, as main underscore volume, just as we had in the other project. And now we've got that command in there. We are ready to assign it. So the last step here is actually just to assign this variable to the control. Uh, you can tell my slider is a little bit hidden here and to fix that, it looks like the height was set at a discrete value of 15 pixels, which wasn't quite enough. We're going to remove that restriction and let it stretch out a bit to fill the container that it's in. Uh, another thing we're going to do here for value variable is go ahead and assign that work that we've done previously here for the volume control for the Onkyo. Uh, one last step on a slider like this, uh, I'm going to set the maximum and minimum values for mine. Uh, our control actually goes anywhere between 0 and 80. 80 would probably blow out the speakers that we've got installed and we wouldn't want uh, anybody to inadvertently turn it on that high. So what we're actually going to do is just set the maximum volume at 60 which would be pretty deafening already and we'll also set the minimum volume at about 20 because uh, below that I think it's quiet anyway. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the application in runtime. You can see that the slider automatically hopped right here in the middle to 40, which is what my receiver is currently set at. So we do know that it's communicating properly. If it wasn't, the slider wouldn't have moved at all. So again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we're gonna connect the receiver two ways. So some commands that I wanna send uh, cannot be sent via ethernet. If you saw on the list earlier, if you remember back, uh, one of the commands that wasn't available was volume up and volume down the same type of commands that are available on the physical remote. So in order to send those, I actually need to use the global cache again to send IR commands. So to add that, we're gonna go down here and select a new device, again, a global cache device. The host name, same as I used before for the TV, uh, all that's gonna change here is the uh, port and module number when we get to it. So it's gonna ask us if we wanna go ahead and add it to the project. We click yes. Sometimes you get an error message there if you've already got a global cache device, uh, but it's okay if you just continue through those messages, it will add it to your project. We'll go ahead and rename this one as well. And this time I'm gonna add IR at the end so I know that I've got the infrared version of the commands. At this point, we can just create a new variable for TXNR636IR uh, volume up. And again, it's in the second port this time. And so I actually found the ones I was looking for here under Onkyo receiver preamp, HDR series main zone, volume up. So I would then come over here and paste that command right in this window. Uh, you'll notice we don't have any buttons set up for it. I'm gonna do a quick UI change here to add some. I'm gonna head over to views and I'm gonna adjust this grid that we made here at the bottom and add a couple of extra columns. Specifically, I want a column right before the remote and, or right before the uh, volume slider and right after. So to do that, I'm gonna make a couple of changes. I'm gonna change this first one uh, back down to regular size. The second one actually is the big one and then third and fourth I'm gonna have as normal. If you remember from the previous video, sometimes when you make changes to um, grids like this, grid uh, columns, it doesn't take effect until you get off and on them. So here we've got our change now showing up. I'm gonna just relocate the slider over to column one, and I'm gonna relocate the toggle switch now to column three. That gives us a quick space before and after the slider. The slider is great for big, 
volume changes, but if you're just doing very minute things, it's very difficult with a finger to just move it a couple of points left or right. So in order to add some, uh, some helpfulness here, we're just gonna add a control button. I'm just gonna use text, kill off the margins, and this time I'm gonna use volume down here. And for the text, I'm just gonna put a minus sign. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here for volume up. And for the text here as a plus. Uh, this plus one is the one that I want to assign the variable to. So here we've got the TX NR636 IR volume up. Okay, just some final housekeeping on these two buttons here. Uh, changing them both back to stretch. Uh, resetting any margins or anything that was inhibiting them from taking up all the space necessary. That looks good. So now you've learned how to hook up an infrared receiver as well as an ethernet receiver if it's an Onkyo. I believe Integra works the same way. Um, that's it for this one. We'll see you next time.